Hey, my name is Chris Stefu, that's my official name, but I'm also called Risto Stefu. Uh, the reason I call myself Risto Stefu, that's my uh, Macedonian name. Uh, Chris or Christos Stefu was what the Greeks named us. So rather than uh, hanging on to my Greek name, I decided to change it to uh, Risto Stefu. And uh, that's how I'm known by the Macedonian community here. Um, I was born in 1953 in a village called Oshima in Lerin region, now Greece. And um, we came here, my dad came here in 1965, established himself, and he brought the family in 1966. And um, for many years, um, I've listened to Macedonians discussing politics, discussing history. And uh, I suppose years later, all that information got collected in my head and had to come out somehow. And um, the way things are in Canada, we're far apart. It's very difficult to get together and, and discuss these things. Uh, my most available thing to me was writing. And with the invent of the internet, it was easy to distribute the information. So I started uh, by writing this book here which was uh, for my village association. Uh, every 25 or so years, we uh, compile a book. Um, this was uh, the book for the 100th year. What I decided to do when I was writing this book is uh, distribute the articles for everybody to read. And uh, once that started, there was more demand. I was asked by people to write more if I could write something about Macedonia's history like from ancient times, and this is what I came up with, this book. Okay, this basically, this book starts from prehistoric times to about 1950. Now, a lot of people bought this book and read it, they were happy with it, but there were too many names of cities, of places, and some people want to know, to know where they are. So, I came up with this book just to solve that problem. This book is a shorter history, again a condensed history of Macedonia, but it's also illustrated. There are over 50 maps here. Uh, there are coins, there are photographs of uh, um, our revolutionaries and various sort of things. It also has an index and it can be used as a research, uh, research book. Of course, uh, there was demand also to give away some of these books, so I came up with another book that's called A Short History of Macedonia, which is uh, of the Macedonian people, which is 200 pages, but I don't, they're all sold out. I don't have any of those. But again, as an offshoot, again, uh, from having contact with Macedonians, demand for information, I came up with uh, uh, three other books, uh, one of which was this. Uh, there was a talk, that was the time when uh, uh, we were thinking of the hundred years of uh, Macedonia and the uh, idea was that perhaps the, after a hundred years the Treaty of Bucharest, the 1913 Treaty of Bucharest would expire, okay, so which, which inspired, inspired me to write this book. Of course we know it doesn't expire, but it doesn't uh, stop us from uh, bringing up the issue and making the Macedonian people and the world aware of what's happening to Macedonia and what's happening to the Macedonian people. And here I have, this is an analysis that analyzes basically who the ancient people were, their uh, differences, who the modern people are, their similarities and differences, and so on. Now, I've got a lot of flack from the Greeks. The Greeks have this idea that they're perfect. Okay, they're a perfect society, homogeneous, and we're a bunch of hodgepodge people like all kinds of people mixed together, which is not true, okay? Um, we are a hodgepodge of people, so are the Greeks, okay? So the whole idea was um, to bring this battle to the Greeks. The, for 30 or so years of my life, we have been on the defensive. The Greeks are saying, oh, there's no such thing as a Macedonia. What are you? Macedo no such thing as a Macedonia. Okay? Well, uh, the way I see it, the, 
history of the Balkan people is the same or very similar. So if there's no such thing as a Macedonian, then there's no such thing as a Greek. Okay? If you use, for example, this criteria to create a nation called Greeks, okay, and you use this criteria to create a, the same criteria to create a nation called Macedonians, then yes, there are Macedonians. But if the Greeks insist that there are no Macedonians, we have to insist that there are no Greeks. Okay? And there are a lot of lies in the way the Greek history was created. So this is the result. This book is the result, a response, a, a way of taking the battle to the Greeks and saying, excuse me, you are the people that are lying, not us. Okay? We have a language. Okay? A language we have is not imposed on us. Okay? The Greek language is a language that's imposed on the Greeks. I have uh, 20 lies in there that I've written. This book began more or less as a joke. Okay? A friend of mine and I got together we said, well, why don't we do this and see what comes out? Okay? But um, the Greeks did not take it as a joke. Uh, they took it very seriously. There was a lot of talk about that. And as far as I'm concerned, it's, it answers the question. Um, after writing the book, I wrote this book. Now, there's another thing that's happening nowadays. It's more in the academic world than it is uh, with uh, a general public. A lot of academics are trying to, um, to allow the languages to survive, to preserve the old languages. Okay? In the 19th century, early 20th century, people were looking down at dialects and saying, oh, that's a farmer's language, that's a peasant's language. Okay, we, we need literary languages and so on and so forth. Literary languages are great because what they do is they standardize the language for everybody. But the literary language has no roots. It's an artificial creation. The dialects have a root. Uh, uh, um, languages, dialect, is a natural evolution of a language. Okay, so as a result of Th that type of thinking, I came up with the idea of preserving my own dialect. And as far as I could uh, uh, remember the words on my own, and I had some help from uh, other people, I wrote this book, Preserve the Land. Okay, this one here, um, this was uh, something Michael Serafino wanted, but he's not a historian. So he and I paired up together to write this book. This book was supposed to be the answer uh, to the foreigner, not to the Macedonian, to the Western foreigner, to the English-speaking foreigner. Unfortunately, you couldn't get it published anyway. Okay, so, which means that there are problems, not just with Greece, but with the entire Western world. Because he tried very hard to get it published, just didn't work. Now I'm working, I can tell you a little bit more, I'm working on a couple of more books. Um, one book I finished, and that particular one was donated to the Grigor Perlichev group in Australia. Their idea was to publish a book, like Short History of Macedonia, and donate it to the children so they can learn uh, Macedonian history. So I compiled a book. It's 300 pages long, about 100 of those pages are illustrations, maps, uh, photographs, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's designed to be a research book for children. So they'll have uh, 1,000 books printed and they'll donate them, I assume worldwide, at least in Australia. So another two books I'm working on, I started writing a book about the struggle of Macedonian people. Uh, there is this idea, originating from the Greeks, that there are no Macedonians. There were, how can there be a struggle? However, we have been struggling since the Roman Wars. And we successfully created a state under, under uh, Samuel. And now we're successfully created another state. We almost created a state in uh, 1945, but it was part of a... It wasn't totally independent. It was part of a of the uh, uh, Federal Yugoslavia. So, uh, I was hoping to have that finished this year, but uh, it's too much of an undertaking. I'll have it finished next year. 
So that's the struggle of Masamian people. When I started researching for that, I found that there was a lack of information about the Macedonians in Greece. But I managed to find some sources, but they were mostly Macedonian sources. And uh, these sources were from the actual fighters that fought in the Greek Civil War. So what I decided to do is, in order to highlight the uh, Macedonian struggle in Greece, I decided to uh, write a separate book. So there will be another book coming out sometime next year that's called uh, The Macedonians in Greece, 1939 to 1949.